And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome onto the stage the president of the Women's Forum for the Economy and Society. It's Anne-Gabrielle Helbronner and Ben Page, CEO of Ipsos, for the presentation of the Women's Forum Barometer. Anne-Gabrielle and Ben. Bonjour. Good morning, everyone. It is a pleasure to be with you in this beautiful place and to start this global meeting with the Women's Forum Barometer. Together with Ben Page, CEO of Ipsos, I'm happy to present the third edition of the Women's Forum Barometer on Gender Equity. We have decided to create this barometer in the middle of the pandemic, in 2020, for measuring the perception of gender equality compared to real data. Why? Because it is important to decipher the unsaid, people's actual feelings, you know that uh, inclusion is about people's feeling, about personal experience. And the Women's Forum is the only international platform producing such data. The publication of the report is today, and I'm very proud of it. And please, a round of applause for the team who has worked on this barometer. Now, let's dive in and look at the current situation together. Ben. Thank you, Anne-Gabrielle. So, all of the data are on the website, but you can also uh, see some of the findings in the auditorium. And I think when you see this in black and white, and uh, being here in a very small minority, uh, it just does remind me <laughs> how dramatic some of the findings are. So, the first point uh, is just to be clear about who we've spoken to. So it's based on three and a half thousand interviews with men and women across the G7. When you look at that chart in a global forum, the first thing you notice is that a very large part of the world, of course, is excluded from this. So these are the most industrialized, in some ways more equal societies than the planet as a whole. And I think if we include uh, other parts of the world in future forums, which we may do, I think you would find the findings were even more dramatic in terms of some of the attitudes that you will see. But in the G7, what's clear is that most people, including most men, recognize that gender inequality is a real issue. Uh, nearly 8 out of 10 women, 7 out of 10 men absolutely recognize it as an issue. Uh, and that's important. And although we will address some challenges today, I think it's also worth reminding ourselves of the progress that events like this and constant pressure is actually achieving in the world. And so this data matters. So overall, half of us think that gender inequality is widespread. More of us think it's a problem. And in their country, you can see most women say that gender inequality is widespread in the G7 in their country, not a majority of men, 43%. Compared to 2020, uh, when we began this, the numbers have improved slightly. It was 53% then. It's down a little bit at 49% today, but some big differences across the G7. Look at Italy. Any Italians in the audience? Yeah, yeah, okay, well, there we are. Uh, the French, 
Any okay. Brit yeah, so uh, you can see Italy and France are much more common, uh, and Germany and the UK a bit lower, America lower, uh, lower too. And Japan, the interesting thing about Japan, I think Japan it has, does have a problem, but there is something about how Japanese people answer surveys. They're less likely to agree with anything or disagree with anything in surveys. So most of us do recognize that gender inequality is a problem. But what happens at work? Thank you. So what we learn here is that gender inequality at work is an issue for 67% of respondents. They are convinced that this is an issue at work. And if we dig more into the numbers, we also learn about biases, because what you see on the chart is that when you ask the question to women, 74% answer positively, whereas only 59% of men. It shows the gap we are facing. Thank you. And generally, and this is where I've got lucky in life, <laughs> less competent men are more likely to get promoted than less competent women. They're also more likely, if they're trying to start a business, to get money from investors. So overall, we've only got 17, 16% of women who say that they have more chance to succeed than men who are equally competent. But the vast majority of uh, both men and women agree that women have less opportunities to get ahead and succeed at work than men. Uh, and that is, that is pretty stark. But of course, as we will see when we come to the data on how much women are earning compared to men, uh, it is also the reality. So it is much better to be a, an incompetent man in today's world than an incompetent woman. <laughs> um, it is also true that when we look at what people believe about opportunities to become an entrepreneur, to start your own business, only eight people in 100 in the G7 believe there's a female advantage. 49% of people across the G7, the majority of women, say that women are going to have less opportunities than men. And again, you know, this is just pretty dramatic. If we need in our economies, and indeed much of the growth in the West uh, over the last 50 years has simply come from women going into the world of work. Uh, and as we continue that trajectory, this is, this is really striking. So, how does it look from a female perspective at work? Am I doing this one or are you doing this You're one? You're doing it, I think. Thank you, we're just checking. <laughs> so, um, first of all, we've got one in three women who say they've noticed that they were paid less than men who were equally competent. So, they've already noticed that. In France, it will be higher. Um, and the average pay gap across the G7, many of you will have noticed this, 14.6%. So on average, women earn 14.6% less than men. If you're female in this audience, at this point in November, you've already started working for free for your employer compared to the man who is still being paid. Uh, and one in, th one in four women um, have noticed that actually a man has been promoted over them, even though they were actually more competent. So the woman was more competent, but the man got the job. One in, one in four people, one in four women noticed that. Um, and overall, we've only got about a third of managers who are female, when the fact is, and this is a fact, women are better managers than men. Uh, I say this with long experience. I think the data on that uh, is pretty much unequivocal, inequ actually. But generally, this is the century for women, for women managers. But the balance is not there yet. Uh, and so all those initiatives to achieve more gender balance, particularly at senior levels in business, uh, like my own, are really, really important. And I think one of the biggest challenges women face is this balance between work and their private life. And all the evidence is that women work harder than men. You sure it's mine? I don't know. Let's see. This is me. Sorry. It's because there are no numbers on the slides, and I'm trying to do this from memory. But as always, Anne Gabrielle is far better prepared than me. Um, so,
I think what's interesting are these, te these tensions that women experience more than men when they're in the world of work. The, the, the different expect the expectations we have on women in the domestic setting, the expectations we have on women at work. So first of all, we've got a large proportion who's saying that you can't have it all. If you want to be a good mother, you have to partly sacrifice your professional career. And roughly the same number of both men and women tend to think that. Uh, and so that's, that's pretty striking. That constant guilt that we see working mothers suffer from more than working men. A woman will always be happier in her role as a mother than her professional life. Well, 28% of people across the G7 believe that that's true. Um, we do have a majority who disagree, and actually, but the proportion who agree with that doesn't really seem to be changing. So these very long established stereotypes uh, in our own minds in many cases are often driving some of this. And then career-wise, men are naturally more ambitious than women, Anne Gabrielle. I knew uh, it, Ben. I knew it. <laughs> well, I, I mean, 29% of people believe that, 34% of men. So, the, you know, the woman may not get promoted, but never mind. She's less ambitious than the man. Um, well, this is the, these are the stereotypes, and they are declining, I think, over time, but they are, still, they are still there. Subconscious, unconscious bias is a huge part. The, mo the cleverest people in the world, the cleverest people in the world are all subject to unconscious bias of different sorts. And when we come to gender, that is also true. And I think what's clear, and now it is your turn. I think it is. It is your turn. Is how, and I think this is what's so interesting, is how work impacts life choices, but also then, of course, people's life choices affect what happens at work. Over to you. Thank you, Ben. I think, you know, the slides we just uh, seen on stereotypes and this one are maybe the most important of the presentation. And uh, on this one, what do we learn? We learn that, you know, a person's life impacts very, very much work life, especially for women and vice versa. So here, first point is that there is a huge impact of unpaid work on the future financial security of women. And then there is this need for a huge cultural shift. Only a huge cultural shift could change the rules of the game. And no surprise, no surprise, unfortunately, family responsibilities are far from being equally distributed. So what can possibly explain these replies? Well, still in 2022, women spend more than four hours per day on unpaid work, and for men, it's two hours per day. And please don't forget, here we are talking about the G7 countries. They represent more than half of the global wealth on the planet and 10% of the population. If you take the world globally, women do three times more unpaid care than men. And it threatens their economic security and then their pensions, because globally, less than 45% of women have a pension scheme. So you see, perception meets reality and sometimes goes beyond it. So now we have to take action. Thank you. And then when we come to things like the tech sector, which of course has been booming over the last few years, uh, there's cl clear evidence of a very, very strong gender gap. And interestingly, we've got about three out of ten women who have heard somewhere, someone has told them this, or they've worked this out, that actually scientific careers are for men. Women, women don't do science. And we've got the same proportion of people who believe that the minds of people in this room are not scientific. <laughs> um, this is clearly nonsense, but this is a belief. Uh, and so addressing those stereotypes uh, is so important. Uh, and on average, the number of people, and this belief feeds into what actually happens. Stereotypes change lives, often for the worst, 
Uh, and in this case, looking at who's doing the science, the technology, the engineering degrees, the ones that we need in our society, um, less than half that of men, despite women generally now succeeding much more in academia than men in many Western societies. But when it comes to STEM subjects, uh, they, are, they are massively underrepresented. When we look at what happens in healthcare, women get a worse deal than men, as in so many other areas. And so we've got a large proportion of women who say that actually their doctor didn't take them seriously. Uh, they didn't take their pain seriously when they explained that they, wanted, they needed help. Uh, and that is, again, much higher than for men. And, you know, when you come to the thing that's most likely to kill everybody in this room, cardiovascular disease, all of the research is being done among men, all the new treatments, rather than women, despite it being the leading cause of death for women. And women and men's bodies have a lot of similarities, but are not completely similar. And so it's just another example of the challenges that we face, I think, in, and moving towards gender equality. And that's why the barometer is so important in focusing attention on these issues. So, so over to you. To conclude, what we see is that, unfortunately, biases persist, gender gaps persist, but, and there is a but, the picture has cleared up, and there is hope for the future. 77%. 77% is the share of G7 respondents that are convinced that closing the gender gap in their country is a priority. Even more, we've asked all the respondents for voting on a couple of measures that we've proposed. And you know, they have supported very strongly action. For example, coding lessons at school. 75% of people are in favor. Or a compensation fund for pension to fund pensions for women caregivers. 76% are in favor. And to act on bankers' bonuses so that they are incentivized to grant credit to female entrepreneurs as much as they give to male entrepreneurs. So that's where we are. A lot of support to close the gender gap, a lot of support to the measures that we've proposed. Now, we know that it's not just for the government to fix it, it's not just for the uh, private sector to fix it, it's for everybody. So up to you, dear audience, governments, private sectors, to take action. Thank you.